Not every aircraft built was destined to fly. Some were too ambitious, others too flawed, and a few just never stood a chance. Welcome to Fly High Hub, where we explore the skies and the stories that never made it off the ground. These are 10 aircraft that never truly took off. In the early 1930s, the Soviet Union dared to defy gravity with a monster of metal and ambition. The Kalinin K-7 was unlike anything ever built. A steel-winged behemoth powered by seven engines with a wingspan stretching over 170 feet. It could carry 120 soldiers, tanks, even artillery. It wasn't just a plane, it was a flying fortress years ahead of its time. But the future came too fast. On its seventh test flight, a tail boom failed mid-air. The K-7 shattered above Kharkiv, crashing to the earth and taking 14 lives with it. The project was cancelled. The second prototype abandoned. The dream grounded forever. Today, the Kalinin K-7 is remembered not for what it achieved, but for what it could have been. A vision too big to fly. This was the Kalinin K-7, the plane that never truly took off. It looked like it came from outer space, but it was built right here on Earth. In the shadow of the Cold War, the United States and Canada developed a secret project, the Avro Car, a real-life flying saucer designed to change warfare forever. The concept? A vertical takeoff aircraft that could hover, glide and dart across the battlefield, like a UFO under military control. But reality had other plans. The Avro Car could barely lift more than a few feet off the ground. It wobbled, spun and bucked like a mechanical bull, its engines overheated and it had no directional stability. After millions in funding and endless redesigns, the project was grounded permanently. It never went operational and never left prototype testing. The Avro car became a flying saucer that never soared, a futuristic dream buried in the past. This was the Avro car. Bold, futuristic, then sombre and reflective. It was the future of space travel, sleek, reusable, revolutionary. The Lockheed X-33, known as Venture Star, was NASA's next-generation space plane, designed to replace the ageing shuttle fleet and launch into orbit in a single stage without booster rockets. It promised faster missions, lower costs and a fully reusable space vehicle. But as construction began, the problems stacked up. The carbon composite fuel tanks cracked, the heat shielding was unstable, the shape was too complex to control. Years passed, budgets exploded, and in 2001, the dream came crashing back to Earth. The X-33 never flew, not even once. It remains one of NASA's most ambitious failures, a spacecraft that aimed for orbit but never left the ground. This was the X-33 Venture Star. During the height of the Cold War, the Soviets imagined a bomber that would never need to land. A plane powered, not by jet fuel, but by a nuclear reactor. This was the Tupolev Tu-95 LAL, an experimental version of the famous Bear Bomber, modified to carry an onboard nuclear power source. The idea was terrifying. Infinite flight range, no refueling, just endless patrol, with nuclear radiation humming inside. Test flights began in the 1960s, but the engines weren't nuclear yet. They were conventional, while engineers studied the reactor's impact on the crew. The results? Frightening. Radiation shielding weighed too much. Crews were exposed to deadly doses. One miscalculation and a crash could turn into a Chernobyl in the sky. The project was cancelled before it ever went fully nuclear. This was not just a plane that failed, it was a nightmare that never left the runway. This was the Tupolev Tu-95 LAL. 
In the late 1940s, the United States wanted more than a bomber. It wanted a next-generation war machine, faster and more advanced than anything that came before. Enter the Boeing XB-55, a powerful, high-altitude strategic bomber designed to replace the B-47. Equipped with turboprop engines and sleek swept wings, it was a bold step forward, on paper. But as engineers worked on the design, something unexpected happened. Jet engine technology exploded. Within just a few years, the turboprop-powered XB-55 was already obsolete, outrun by the very future it was trying to reach. So before a single prototype was built, the project was quietly cancelled. No hangar rollout, no test flights, just an idea buried in the archives of Cold War aviation. It wasn't a failure of engineering, it was a victim of progress. This was the Boeing XB-55. In post-war France, engineers envisioned a new breed of interceptor, a spearhead of the skies, fast, futuristic and dangerously bold. This was the Leduc 22, a radical fusion of jet and ramjet engines built to intercept enemy bombers at supersonic speeds. It looked like a missile with wings. No cockpit canopy, no air intake as you'd expect. It was designed to pierce the sky. But the timing was all wrong. Ramjet technology was still immature. The aircraft was complex, heavy and politically unsupported. It completed just one manned flight, and that was the end. The French government pulled funding and the project quietly vanished. No squadron, no successors. Just a single, daring prototype left behind. The Leduc 22 wasn't a failure of design. It was a victim of the future arriving too soon. This was the Leduc 22. In the final years of World War II, Nazi Germany designed a bomber unlike anything the world had seen. A flying wing built for stealth, range and destruction. This was the Horton HATA, an intercontinental aircraft designed to fly from Berlin to New York, drop its payload and disappear. Its smooth, tailless design gave it a low radar signature, decades before the word stealth even entered military vocabulary. The plan was clear. Strike fear into the heart of America with a silent, ghost-like machine. But the war ended before the Horton could take flight. Not a single prototype was completed. The blueprints were seized by the Allies, and some believe they helped inspire the future of stealth, including the B-2 Spirit, a Nazi dream that never made it off the page. This was the Horton HATA. Most aircraft are built to fly. This one was built to crash. Meet the Northrop XB-79, an experimental flying wing designed during World War II. Not to fire missiles, but to physically ram enemy bombers out of the sky. Made of magnesium alloy, it was built tough. The pilot flew it lying down face forward like a missile with a heartbeat. Its job? Smash into enemy aircraft, slice through wings with reinforced edges, and somehow keep flying. But it never got the chance. On its very first powered flight in 1945, the XP-79 spiralled out of control. The pilot ejected too late and tragically lost his life. The project was scrapped within days. The military lost faith and the skies were never round. It was one of the most bizarre concepts in aviation history and one of the shortest lived. This was the XB-79. It looked like a bullet with wings. The Douglas X-3 Stiletto designed in the 1950s to slice through the sky at Mach 2 and shape the future of supersonic flight. Built from titanium and powered by twin turbojets, the X-3 was sleek, sharp and stunning on the runway. But the engines couldn't deliver. Despite its appearance, the stiletto struggled to exceed Mach 1, often topping out slower than expected. 
Worse, its handling was dangerous. On one flight, a pilot nearly lost control due to violent roll coupling, a phenomenon nobody had predicted. Just 26 test flights later, the X-3 was grounded. It never broke speed records, but it did help future jets avoid fatal design flaws. A failure in flight, but a lesson in engineering. This was the Douglas X-3 Stiletto. Before Chuck Yeager, before the Bell X-1, Britain was on the edge of breaking the sound barrier first with the Miles M-52, sleek, pointed and powered by an advanced turbojet engine. The M-52 was designed in the 1940s to fly at over Mach 1, at a time when most aircraft couldn't even imagine it. It featured one of the world's first fully movable nose cone stabilizers, a design that would later appear on the American X-1. But just months before testing, the British government pulled the plug, citing budget cuts and fear of pilot safety. The program was abruptly cancelled, and no manned version was ever flown. Tragically, Britain lost its chance to lead the supersonic era. The technology was quietly handed over to the US, and the rest is history. This was the Miles M52. Thanks for flying with us through another forgotten chapter of aviation history. If you enjoyed the ride, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss the next aircraft that almost made it. Got a rare plane you think deserves a spotlight? Drop it in the comments. This is Fly High Hub, where the sky is full of stories. See you in the next flight.